Man, we need some like MGs you. shooting back. Let's get fire superiority. MGs shoot back. Ah, uh, yes, the marksman kit. The most polarizing weapon set in the game. People hate this kit, but not without good reason. Too many people pick this kit, wander off and lone wolf on their own, never use their mics, and use the overpowered weapon only to try and amass some record amount of kills. However, when this kit is used correctly as a proper marksman, giving overwatch for a squad and team, doing recon when necessary, reporting back vital intel, and generally keeping the team somewhat organized with its information. It's one of my favorite kits, and it saddens me it gets so much flack, but it's not the kit's fault. It's the player's fault. Overwhelming majority of people that take this kit just do not play the role correctly. So in this video, I hope to shed some light on how this role is supposed to be played, and hopefully, just maybe, bring some respect back to the marksman role. Welcome to the Military Simulator Tactical Shooter and Historic Gaming Channel. We give away a Steam key at the end of the week, every week. For details on how to enter, stay tuned until later in the video. I honestly have zero respect for marksmen in this game for that. They are rarely helpful. I won't let marksmen enter my squad anyways. Rarely they are useful. Wish there would be squad presets to enable or disable kits. I don't want in my squad. Would instantly enjoy squad leading more. The problem with marksmen is it's usually played by individuals that don't have a mic and don't respond to command from squad leader. Whenever I squad lead, I usually ban the marksman kit from my squad, unless the person is communicating and the map being played requires the kit. And that's just a few of them. Needless to say, this kit has a bunch of negative energy all around it. We're gonna do what we can to clear that up a bit. Cause like I said, when this kit is played correctly, it makes for a more confident, organized team. Next to the squad leader, it may just be the most important kit on the entire team. So we're gonna separate this tutorial or guide into two different kind of schools of thought. One being your standard marksman, who's in the rear of the squad, looking to elevate and provide overwatch, which you will be doing the majority of the time and then there is recon more where the word sniper comes from you'll be using these skills much more seldomly however it is an extremely important part of the role you'll be reconning or gathering intel mainly in between capture points and of course i'll delve more deeply into the topic when the time comes so starting with the meat and potatoes the marksman squad leader and the rest of the squad will benefit so much from his intel in fact information he provides is just as if not more important than the kills he'll get so first things first let's take a look at this little infantry handbook now you should know all of this x is to range in your weapon you can attach and use bayonets drink from your canteen for stamina the button v for local chat b for squad chat etc now if even one of these is news to you stop this video now click the link in the top right it's my postscriptum guides playlist and you want to start back on the beginner courses I highly advise new people to this game stick to the riflemen or medic kits until they have somewhat of a grasp of the game and what's going on. Don't jump straight to SL, AT, or marksman. Alright, so first things first, position. The marksman should travel behind the rest of the squad and also, while he's back there, kind of cover the rear if that role hasn't already been assigned to another rifleman. Now as the squad becomes aware of targets requiring long range fire, the squad will direct you to where the target is. That way you can set up, preferably find some elevation, and neutralize the target. When a squad is engaging a flag, the marksman should hang back out of the cap zone and cover enemy enemy spawns or enemy approaches that they may use to to reinforce the flag. If you do not know where they might be spawning from or where they might be approaching from next, position yourself in the safest spot that offers protection and options to escape while being able to survey the largest area possible. Using your map and giving intel. Apart from your main job of supporting squad mates with accurate fire over long distance, you will find yourself in a lot of situations where you'll be giving a lot of information not only to your squad leader but to other friendlies within the squad. It is important to master using the map, not just the bearing from yourself to the target but also from other landmarks and friendlies to the enemies using the map. As a marksman, the map is an important tool. You need to have more knowledge than the rest of the squad on how to use this effectively. You'll be using the map both for shooting accurately and to give information to the rest of the squad. Now it is vital that you learn to calculate the vertical or horizon distance using the measurements on the lower right corner of the map. Typically, the biggest square on the grid is 300 meters, then 100 meters, and the smallest 33 meters. Now calculating a diagonal distance is 
is much harder. It's just something you're gonna have to figure out. They have calculators online, but typically the distance is a bit longer when it's diagonal. And keep in mind, speed is of the essence, and you don't have to be exactly accurate. Give a direction, an estimated distance. Really, the quicker, the better. Now, like I said earlier, giving intel can be just as important as killing the enemy. In some circumstances, you won't have a shot on an enemy. You'll see him run behind a house. This is why it's always good to have awareness of where your squad members are. Let's say you see an enemy just for a brief second or two. He runs behind a house you cannot reach. Although 100, 200 meters away from you is one of your team members on a far left flank. You then jump on the squad radio and give him an estimated direction and distance of where the enemy is. Not only will you have that enemy taken out, but you could have possibly saved your teammate from a surprise. Now, finally, the most fun and important part, engaging the enemy. There are various elements to consider when engaging the enemy. We'll start with discipline. It is important to practice discipline when shooting. Firstly, ammo is limited and you cannot wait a whole magazine just to hit one person. It is not your job to suppress the enemy. Your job is to deliver the killing shot. Now, second, perhaps the most important is movement. Don't get too comfortable in one spot. The more you shoot from one position, the more likely it is the enemy to find you or even counter snipe you. Keep in mind there will be cases where you just track enemy movements and not shoot because it'll be more beneficial to let them pass allowing you to hit a higher priority target or sometimes it's more important to not blow your entire squad's cover for say you're coming from a far flank where the enemy is not expecting you to come from the last thing you want to do is blow your entire squad's cover know when not to shoot now movement and position when moving always try to avoid enemy sight if you can take the long road put a good amount of distance between you and where you think the enemy is always use hedge grows or any kind of concealment and then always duck or even crawl when you have to a good enemy team if they spot you will relay that information to the rest of the team and a veteran player can tell if you're a marksman or not from a good distance and you better believe when he calls you out to the whole team they will be head hunting you and secondly always try to find an elevated position however always consider concealment or better yet hard cover it's useless to go to the highest point on the map have your silhouette stick out and end up getting killed seconds later. Try and look for bushes or trees, obstructions basically that can create camouflage or better yet cover against enemy fire. Also consider not going all the way to the top of a hill or mountain. Use the upper middle part of the hill just to make it that much harder to spot you. Fire and maneuver. After finding a good location to shoot from, you start shooting, get a few kills, then suddenly catch a bullet in the head. The mistake is that you made too much sound from one location and probably drew the attention of an enemy marksman or grenadier. When playing as marksman, it is always important to move once you've engaged the enemy. Now, let's say you've engaged a squad that is already engaged with some other unit. You could probably risk staying there as they have no idea they're getting hit from the side by you. But if you're the first person that starts engaging an enemy they will probably return fire within a few seconds so it is important to know when to shoot first and when to wait for somebody else to draw fire from the enemy before engaging so that they will not be focused on you but on someone else Target prioritization. Patience is important for a marksman. If you just shoot the first person that you see, you'll get kills, but you will not be getting the most out of what the kit can offer. Learning to identify kits is important for the marksman as you need to make choices on who to shoot first and who to shoot next. In general, always try to eliminate enemies in the following order. First, of course, is the squad leader. He's able to drop FOBs, rally points, and he's generally giving orders to the rest of the squad. Kill him and you handicap the entire squad's offensive and defensive of capabilities. Grenadier. A grenadier can easily wipe out a squad with his four grenades, and a veteran grenadier is very dangerous to the marksman himself. If you get killed not knowing where the heck it came from, generally it was a grenadier that got you. Take him out first anti-tank the guy carrying the big old stick the less enemy ats running around the map the better off your tanks and vehicles are going to be now especially if you're in a squad that is supporting an allied tank these guys have to be very high of a priority considering he alone can take out one tank subtracting at least 20 tickets from your team's ticket pool
Now, this one could probably be higher on the list. Just know if you get the chance, take him out ASAP. And that's the Machine Gunner. As you may already know, the Machine Gunner can suppress your entire squad, sometimes keeping you from moving for several minutes. Do not try to engage an enemy Machine Gunner within 100 meters or even 200 meters. Use your advantage, and that is distance. He's not going to be able to do anything but suppress you at three to 400 meters, where you can range your weapon, brace it on a windowsill or tree, and take a good calculated shot. Now we're covering the marksman pretty much last, but he can really go anywhere on this list. Maybe even before squad leader. Being able to counter snipe is going to be something you learn with time. And it all starts with the audio. With practice, you'll be able to hear and pinpoint a marksman just by the sound of his gunfire. And with practice, you'll learn where to position yourself and exactly how to hunt these enemy snipers down. Now as far as the rest of the kits, we have riflemen, medics, tell you the truth, sometimes if I'm being real cheeky, I'll let the medic pick up the guy just so I can kill him again, but I don't advise this. In fact, read the Geneva Convention for information on engaging medics. I kid, I kid. Now finally, weapon familiarization. Some of you are going to want to take your weapon, whether it be the Springfield, Car 98, or the French sniper rifle. You're going to want to learn your weapon. Not always will you be able to just range it in, sometimes the enemy will be in between ranges and you got to aim either high or low this is something you're going to want to figure out just by messing around with each rifle also it's very important you learn how each rifle sounds that way when the enemy marksman sounds out you will be able to pick that sound from the bunch giving you the upper hand because you know where he is he doesn't know where you are and before we move on to the next school of thought let's do a quick summary generally you're going to be hanging back you have the squad leader the assault fire team up front and you're going to be with the support fire team in the back with the mgs once engaged however you will be able to move generally freely find an elevated spot and remember killing is second to intel your vital intel will not only save other squad members but you are the eyes on the battlefield your information relayed to the squad leader is relayed to the commander thus giving a picture of what's going on on the battlefield stick with your squad in this next part I'm gonna tell you when to move and when to separate from them for the vast majority of the game you're gonna be right there with them all right, now that pretty much covers 90% of what you'll be doing as marksman. However, depending on the map, depending on the layer, depending on the play style, and what's happening within the game, this second school of thought may come into play more often, and that's reconnaissance. Now, whatever you do, do not run off on your own the entire match and relay bits of intel and tell your squad leader that Boogie5 said you're doing reconnaissance. Because like I said, the majority of the time you're going to be wanting to provide Overwatch right there there with the squad however there are times when your abilities will much rather be used getting ahead of the squad and the entire team and providing precious intel now typically when this happens is in the transition period of taking a capture point now make sure you discuss this with your squad leader and he will discuss it with the rest of the team once your team is feeling pretty confident that they're capping the point they will give you the signal to go ahead and start bugging out and to set yourself up somewhere real close to the next point and preferably an elevated position and as soon as you get there start reporting what you see now ask permission before you shoot but know when or when not to shoot now typically if you see an entire logi squad and they're kind of in the open and you think you can drop all of them just radio to your squad leader and he will give you the go ahead and that's when you open up on them because taking out the logistical team on the next point could be devastating to the enemy team from here you're just going to want to give intel you see an enemy squad rolling in from the east report that to sl now if you think you can drop more bodies without getting spotted go for it however typically you're gonna want to kind of remain as quiet as you can because at this point the intel you're relaying to the rest of the team is much more important than killing a couple guys that are just gonna respawn anyway so if you're in a good concealed location and you don't think anybody's really spotted you try to keep it that way and that's pretty much it boys and just to reiterate it is not your job to stay way ahead of the team only do this in the transitional period and of course, ask for permission from your SL. Nine times out of ten, if you just stay communicative, he's going to let you do as you wish. Just don't get greedy. And whatever you do, do not go three, four, five, six hundred meters out in front of the whole team, lone wolfing. They will just kick you. 
All right, well, I hope we were able to shed some light on this awesome role that clearly has just a bad rep. Please go out there, use what you've learned. Do not be a lone wolf. And maybe, just maybe, we'll instill the rightful respect this role deserves. I want to thank everybody for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell button. Don't miss a video. We give away a Steam key every week at the end of the week. Super easy to enter. Just like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, join us on Discord, it's linked below and drop a comment say whatever you want but leave your discord name and number in the comment because that's going to be your ticket stub we also have an episodic series of the top 10 milsim moments come through to the discord submit your clips in the submit your clips section because whoever has the funniest the best kill streak the coolest clip is gonna win a steam key want to give a big shout out to my channel members the milsim minions consider joining by hitting the blue button below get double the entry in every week's steam key giveaway all while supporting the channel we're barreling towards five thousand subscribers again i want to thank you all i'll see you boys in the next one y'all be good to each other